Okay, continue our discussion uh, about the uh, inborn errors of metabolism, uh, especially the uh, carbo the ones related to carbohydrate diseases. Uh, we're talking about uh, the glucogen storage uh, disorders. Uh, and we're, we're at our last and final one, uh, glucogen storage disease number five, also known as uh, McArdle's, uh, named after the gentleman who discovered it. So uh, this one is very specific for the muscle, and it actually helps that it starts with an M, helping you remember that it is the muscle. And uh, basically we have a deficiency of an enzyme uh, known as um, myophosphorylase. And so since enzymes involved, it's gonna be autosomal recessive and pretty much all of these inborn error of metabolisms are autosomal recessive. So uh, if you have deficiency of the myophosphorylase enzyme, uh, this enzyme is responsible for converting uh, glycogen into glucose in the muscle. And so that's why it's, first of all, it's called myo, and primarily the symptoms are going to be related to um, the muscle. Now, um, just to get an understanding of what's, you know, when it get, comes into play, uh, the muscle, as far as how it uses energy, it first prefers to use glucose, energy, it'll then move on to fatty acids, and then it'll move on to glycogen. So in the everyday type of stuff, they're okay. It's only intense exercise uh, where you have the symptoms. And so with that, we can move on to our next part of our discussion, which is uh, the clinical findings. Uh, and again, like I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, only with uh, intense exercise, uh, high intensity exercises uh, in uh, short bursts, like our, our sh in short bursts, uh, they, be or they, they, become, they tend to become symptomatic. Um, or if you, even if it's low intensity, uh, but if it's sustained, uh, that also tends to uh, give them some difficulty, but so but if it's uh, low intensity and short, they're, they're usually okay because you know they can still use the regular glucose from the blood and the uh, fatty acid. So uh, what type of uh, symptoms occur when when they when it gets triggered? Uh, the primary symptom is going to be exercise intolerance. Uh, they just get tired out. Uh, often it's accompanied with uh, muscle cramping, uh, fatigue. Uh, and pain in, in somewhere in the muscles depending on the uh, muscle that's being used. Uh, so this is the classic uh, symptom there and actually what, what tends to happen immediately afterwards is they get uh, post-exercise red urine. Post-exercise red urine and the reason why it's red urine is because of rhabdomyolysis. So rhabdomyolysis, uh, rhabdomyolysis means that uh, the, the muscle cells are all actually being uh, dying off and going into the blood and rhabdomyolysis leads to uh, myoglobin being released into the blood and then being released in the urine as my myoglobinuria and this can eventually lead to renal failure and this also kind of brings up a good point uh, because there's a drug that is uh, classic uh, side effect is rhabdomyolysis and that's statin so so uh, the use of statins which is an MG HMG CoA uh, reductase inhibitor is contraindicated in these types of patients. Uh, the third phenomenon that is found with these patients is the is called the second wind phenomenon. And what happens is if they take a rest for 10 minutes, uh, they tend to be okay. So 10 minute rest really does help them. And so the idea is, you know, after 10 minutes, uh, they can kind of replenish their glucose and fatty acid stores and then use that instead of using the glycogen. So that's, uh, that's primarily the... Uh, symptoms there. There is slight liver. Sometimes some patients have problems with liver, but predominantly we're looking at uh, exercise intolerance, post-exercise red urine, and this uh, second phenomenon. Uh, that's it. So how do you diagnose it? Uh, there is a diagnostic test, uh, which is called the uh, ischemic forearm test. And so what this uh, involves is um, what you're doing is you first so you begin by taking uh, measure, you know, you take venous samples of the creatine kinase, uh, the ammonia level, and the lactate level. Okay, and then what you do is you put on a uh, blood pressure cuff, and uh, you know you you uh, I guess you inflate it, right? So you take the blood pressure cuff, you inflate it, which restricts the blood flow, and then you ask them to do repetitive uh, grasping. So you, you give them something to hold in their hand. Uh, you tell them to do it at one to two per second for two to three minutes. 
And so the whole idea is you're restricting blood flow so they won't, they won't be able to get glucose from their uh, bloodstream, so they, it forces the muscle to depend on glycogen stores. And then what you do is uh, after you're done, you will release the uh, blood pressure cuff and you'll take venous samples. So you take, uh, you take venous samples of the blood again, uh, and again you're going to look at uh, creatine kinase, ammonia, and lactate, and you're going to do it at five minutes, ten minutes, and twenty minute increments. And you're going to get a urine sample uh, because you're going to look for any evidence of uh, myoglobin, uh, myoglobinuria that may have occurred. So why are we taking creatine kinase, ammonia, and lactate? Well, the creatine kinase is a measurement of uh, muscle destruction, so you know that's that's helpful to find. But why the ammonia and the lactate? Well. Uh, let's first look at the normal results. So, uh, normal, uh, what should occur? Well, what you're expecting is um, you should increase in lactate because uh, as, uh, as you're overworking the muscle, uh, it, you, get, uh, you don't have enough, uh, the Krebs cycle gets uh, overwhelmed and then you start to depend on lactate for ATP. So, you're, you, normally you'd expect an increase in lactate and an increase in ammonia. Now, what if, uh, and the ammonia is just, it's going to increase as you're using your, your muscle, you, you tend to uh, create ammonia, which is a normal uh, type of byproduct. Now, what if uh, you get, uh, say your test results is increased lactate, sorry, let's talk about uh, decreased lactate and decreased ammonia. Well, what this means is uh, that it was not strenuous enough because we because you have low ammonia so you if you weren't able to increase even levels of ammonia of course you want to increase the level of lactate so this means you got to you got to redo the test the test wasn't strenuous enough now what if you have uh, a, a decrease in lactate and a increase in ammonia well that means you were able to increase the ammonia so you did do significant work now you weren't able to produce lactate, so why wouldn't you be able to produce lactate? Well, the only reason is because you weren't able to supply enough glucose to overwhelm the, uh, you know, to make enough pyruvate to overwhelm the Krebs cycle, and so you didn't make any lactate. So this sh this kind of suggests uh, that there is some pathway disturbance. So this is suggestive. I mean, it's not conclusive, but it does suggest it. And then you're going to want to, you know, once you once you see this, you're going to want to do a muscle biopsy, which is a definitive test. And, um, and you want to look at this muscle enzyme activity. And so uh, d this is how the ischemic forearm test works. And, but again, it's not definitive, but it lets you know whether it's worth it to do a muscle biopsy, which you don't otherwise want to do uh, unless, there's, uh, unless that test is positive. So uh, what is a treatment? Um, there is dietary treatment. Uh, so one form of treatment is a diet. Uh, there's, there's two things. One, some, you know, this is controversial, but they're saying increasing protein in the diet may help exercise tolerance, but this is controversial. And they also say, uh, you know, having sucrose right before exercise can help you, so it's probably related to increasing the blood sugar levels and depending on that for um, uh, fuel rather than, you know, breaking down glycogen. But primarily, uh, it's going to be activity modification. Uh, you, you, you know, you don't do, uh, you don't do any intense activities. However, you do want to do low intensity, moderate, regular exercise to try and increase your uh, exercise tolerance and just stay healthy overall. So, I hope that was good. See you guys later.